India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Italy to attend the G20 summit. In a message to world leaders ahead of the summit, Prime Minister Modi said that the focus must be on pandemic recovery, the climate fight and tackling cross-border terrorism. Prime Minister Modi's visit comes at a time when the world is looking towards India to set an example in sustainable and speedy pandemic recovery. According to the IMF, India will remain the fastest growing economy in the post-pandemic world. The G20 this year has gained special significance and the meet comes at a time when global economies are struggling, with unemployment, hunger and supply chain crises crippling the world. On day one of his visit to Italy, Prime Minister Modi held bilateral meetings with Charles Michel, the President of the European Council, and Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission. The leaders discussed ways to enhance economic as well as people-to-people -people relations aimed at creating a safer planet. The Indian Prime Minister also paid a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at the Piazza Gandhi in Rome. He also interacted with the Indian diaspora in Rome. He will later hold a bilateral with Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi. Prime Minister Modi will also visit the Vatican City to call on Pope Francis. On the sidelines of the G20 summit, the Prime Minister will meet several European leaders, including France's President Emmanuel Macron, the in-person meeting with the French president comes as part of a high-level exchange between the two, including the telephonic conversation in September after the controversial AUKUS pact that had miffed Paris. India and France are aiming to strengthen their strategic partnership in the Indo-Pacific. Prime Minister Modi's other key engagements include bilateral meetings with German Chancellor Angela Merkel, another one with the Spanish Prime Minister and meetings with the Indonesian president as well as the Prime Minister of Singapore. After the G20 summit, Prime Minister Modi will also attend the COP26 summit in Glasgow in the United Kingdom, where he is expected to highlight India's track record in the fight against climate change and the very significant transition to renewable energy. The era of extravagant diplomatic meets is back. Backslapping, handshakes, elaborate welcome ceremonies, photo ops, personal interactions. With a new edition of masks, of course. These are all up for display for all of us to see at the Grand Colosseum of Diplomacy in the city of Rome in Italy. Arrivals, bilaterals and special meetings have now begun ahead of the high-wired 16th G20 summit. Let's now begin by showing you the arrivals. Presidential aircraft and diplomatic private jets are lining up at the airport in Rome. The world leaders with their diplomatic entourage have touched down to be welcomed by the Italian ministerial team. At the airport, US President Joe Biden, Brazilian President Bolsonaro, the President of South Korea, Moon Jae-in, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, the Sultan of Brunei, the Finance Minister of Slovenia, the Chairperson of the African Union and President of the Democratic Republic of Congo. All the leaders arrived, greeted officials and were whisked off to their respective destinations in the Eternal City. A number of bilaterals have also taken place with a few lined up. In the latest, President Biden has focused all his energies to portray his famous America is back catchphrase with his diplomatic marathon at the Group of 20 summit. One of the highlights of the day was the much-awaited and highly symbolic meeting between the world's most prominent Roman Catholics at the Vatican City, Joe Biden and Pope Francis. A dozen of Swiss guards present in their blue and gold striped uniform with red plumed halberds. They all stood at attention in the San Damaso courtyard to welcome the US president and of course the First Lady. They were received by the Monsignor Leonardo Sapienza. He runs the papal household. Biden then greeted one by one the papal ushers, also known as the papal gentlemen. They were all lined up in the courtyard and Joe Biden held a private meeting with the Roman pontiff, which reportedly went over time. 
The meeting lasted for about 75 minutes, which is an unusually long time for an audience with the Supreme Pontiff. The pair then proceeded to a broader meeting with the First Lady and top officials joining in. The lengthy session did put Biden behind schedule for his later meetings, which was with his Italian counterpart. Joe Biden held his first bilateral meeting with Italian President Sergio Mattarella at the Quirinal Palace. The leaders posed for photos. Biden went off to privately greet the Italian and American delegation at the palace. And then the American and Italian presidents walked up the stairs for their bilateral. Sir, how was your meeting with the Pope? Wonderful. The meeting was followed by another bilateral with the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi. He was about 45 minutes behind schedule. This bilateral was held at the Chigi Palace in Rome. Following tradition, the leaders posed for a photo op before heading in for the face-to-face -face meeting. Now, for more on U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to the G20 summit, our correspondent Susan Teherani is now joining us live from New York. Susan, thanks for joining us. Now, President Biden is in Rome for the summit. Two very significant meetings, as we just talked about. One, of course, with the Pope, which lasted for nearly 75 minutes, and another one coming up with France's Emmanuel Macron. And this one, of course, is going to be highly anticipated after the AUKUS controversy. Tell us about these two meetings. Uh, Joseph Biden has been to the Vatican many times, but this was the first time that he visited uh, the Vatican and the Pope as president and only the second uh, Roman Catholic U.S. president visiting the Pope. And while they did have a very long meeting and perhaps talked about many issues of mutual interest, there is at least one sticking point, and that's the issue that in the United States, the Democratic Party has a very radical stance on abortion, which is in stark contrast to the Catholic religion. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, the Vatican or the Pope will come out with a statement on what they talked about, or maybe they'll forego uh, a statement, um, or they will perhaps talk about uh, a more a wider range of issues on what was on the agenda, perhaps climate change, poverty, so on and so forth, but there has been a set of controversies regarding this meeting, some saying that perhaps Joe Biden, who has, again, as a Catholic, such a uh, radical stance as a Catholic regarding abortion, uh, should not even receive communion, communion from the Pope. So that's one religious aspect of this meeting. Yes, very noteworthy indeed, being uh, the president, meeting uh, the pope, being only the second Roman Catholic in U.S. history. And then, of course, you have the host, um, the Italian officials, meeting uh, the U.S. president as well, uh, Joe Biden, visiting Europe for the second time uh, since becoming a president. Emmanuel Macron's uh, meeting with Joe Biden. Everyone knows that this is the first time the two leaders will be face to face after that dust up regarding the AUKUS deal that uh, France was very upset about. Uh, we are waiting for a statement, a Biden Macron statement after that meeting, uh, which is expected to focus on uh, what they say is a mutual respect for a strategic autonomy uh, regarding Europe's defense capabilities that the U.S. administration will be supportive of, counterterrorism measures uh, that France wants to pursue in Africa that the United States will be supportive of, and perhaps some kind of cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region as well. But this is really uh, a lot more about uh, how France wants to be perceived as being respected, uh, not only among its European allies, but on the world stage and from the U.S. administration as well after this meeting. Absolutely. Susan, my second question for you, what will be the U.S. agenda at the G20 and later, of course, the more crucial COP26 summit? Is Biden expected to make any big announcements? It's an interesting time for the United States to go back to Europe. As you remember, uh, it's 
been a long time since Joe Biden took that stage. Seems like a lifetime ago when he uh, went to Europe for the first time and said that America is back. And Europe is at a situation right now which is wondering uh, a lot of the countries on where they stand in their relationship with the United States after that uh, faulty withdrawal from Afghanistan. On the one hand, America's pivot to the Indo-Pacific heavily on the other. And, uh, you know, Europe's relationship with China, America's relationship with China on the other. But I think Biden will try to uh, focus his trip not only on pandemic-related issues, a post-pandemic economy, but climate change as well. As you know, before departing from uh, the United States, he focused heavily on some kind of framework on a climate and economic bill here at home so he could have uh, something in hand to take to Europe uh, to push that climate agenda on the international stage. So uh, I think those are the issues that we'll be looking uh to discuss, uh, but in the subtext of it, I think um, uh, the broader issue will be how uh, European relations with the United States will move forward in the near future uh, with the United States, as I mentioned, really uh, heavily focused uh, in the Indo-Pacific and how it wants to realign its relationship right. with Europe moving, future, uh, moving forward in the near future. Yeah. Susan Tehrani, our correspondent from New York, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond with all those insights. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.